this is the DJI Avata. I have had two flights of this so far, but I want to give you my first impressions, first flights, and just my general thoughts. You can go make it your own decision into buying one of these or not. But I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my experience so far. So first, like everyone else, they, you would have come across all those leaked images and leaked videos um, about this thing. When I first saw it, to be honest, I was like, you know what? I don't care, I don't want to bother about this. Because the first DJI FPV that came to market, this one was a bit meh. I think that's the word I'm going to use. So I thought, you know what, I'm not even going to bother. I'm going to use my own Cine Log, my own FPV setup, uh, which we built from scratch. So that was it. And then we, I got a hold of this two days ago. When I took it for a fly, I was very impressed with two things. The first one was the flight time. So a general FPV pilot, you're only gonna, you're gonna be used to getting between three, maybe five, six, seven minutes at tops. This, I was comfortably getting about 14 minutes. Just general, normal flying. Not gunning it, not going crazy, not trying to do loops and whatnot. But the time flying this thing is impressive because from a cine whip point of view, when you're trying to get some of these shots or trying to nail these little movements through trees and whatnot, most of the time you stuff up, you want to go back around and go again. And by the time you do that, you really chewed up valuable battery time. But with this, you've just got that extra time in the air where you can just really take your time and go through these movements again. And it's just more time in the air. It's just really, really good in that sense. The second impressive or important thing is when you when you want to recompose your shot or reset, normally with an FPV unit, you have to still 100% have concentration on your sticks to be able to manually move it back or to land or to grab it and then go again, right? So you can't just take your hands off the sticks and it will just hover. But because there's a G DJI system, there's GPS inbuilt, there's all the smarts in here, you can literally take your hand off the controls, it will come to a stop, take your goggles off, work out where the hell you are or where the hell the drone is, put it back on and then go again and complete your flight. But I also wanted to say they've added some really smart things. When you USB-C out of these goggles into an iPad, you can see the live view and the live view is proper live. So impressive. You're, you're watching next to you on an iPad Pro, let's say at 1080, 60. So very, very smooth playback. And this is also good for sets. So if you're on a, a video set or you're shooting some content and you've got the DOP next to you or the director, and they want to see what you're seeing, you can't with these, because you can't be, no, no, you can't do that. And traditionally what we'd used to do is we'd go from USB-C into a smart controller and a smart controller they would look at or a HDMI out of that into a Atomos or whatever. But now straight to the iPad Pro, nice long cable, and then off you go. You can have 100% concentration on your flight and your director can see the monitor. So. And also, in some countries' laws, especially in Australia, you need to have a certain license to fly this thing. It's called an EVLOS, Extended Visual Line of Sight, which means if you've got goggles like this and you're flying only through your goggles, you need that license. So technically, you can't really be flying like this for commercial use. But to get around that, cable out into your iPad, and you can put this down and fly just using your iPad or like you would with a normal DJI system, which is also a really, really handy thing. All right, let's talk about goggles. These are the new Goggles 2. This is the FPV Goggles version 2. Now, there's a little thing you, you've got to be mindful of. Your Avata, obviously, will be compatible with the new Goggles 2. It's also compatible with the version two, so you can pair these up. And I think there is some benefit with this. There is 120 frames per second, 1080, but this is at 100 frames at 1080. Much of a muchness. But I have to check about the version ones, but if you've got the old school, old school, the older, the original FPV DJI system, you can't pair this with the new goggles. So it's only that with version two but this can be compatible with both of these. All right, let's talk about the controllers. Out of the box, for some reason, it only comes with this. Now, it might just be a limited thing at the moment, but in Australia, because it just got released, you only get this, you have to either already have one of these or you gotta buy this separately, which is a bit annoying, because most pilots, most serious FPV Cine pilots would wanna fly with one of these. 
So you're gonna buy these separately. It's actually the same as the older version. So there's nothing different about this. Let's just be clear first. Uh, you got your start stop button here. You got your pause button on the left. Also manual mode, sports mode, and your normal mode here. And you can tilt your gimbal up and down, which is also really cool. I didn't actually mention that before, but with the Avata, you can control the gimbal with this. So just in some of the shots that I was playing around with yesterday, getting really low to the ground, and as you're, you're doing a really close push in, you can kind of tilt the camera up at the same time, or even when you're doing a dive, or any other kind of movements, you also have control over the tilt, which formerly you couldn't with a GoPro or any other drone system, uh, FPV system. So that's very interesting. So yeah, that's it. These are the two controllers. All right, let's talk about camera specs real quick. 4K 50, 60 with this one. Uh, at 2.7K, you can get up to 100 frames. Video format, MP4. Maximum video bit rate is 150 megabits per second, which is good. And you can also take stills at 48 megapixels, which I find really interesting because usually FPV, you're on the go, you're always moving, you're not really stopping still to take photos, but this you can, so they've added in the photos as well, which... I wonder if you could do like tank inspections. Okay. Color mode, now there's a standard and a D-Cine like. We always use D-Cine like or a flatter profile anyway, so go with that if you're serious about grading or getting the best possible picture out of your shots. All right, so EIS, electronic image stabilization, it supports rock steady and horizon steady. Rock steady is its own kind of internal stabilization software. It has horizon steady is where you're flying like this. Horizon stays exactly the same, locked on like as if you're on a gimbal. So it can be enabled or disabled as well if you want to do your own stabilization in post-production. Distortion correction, so it supports normal mode, there's a wide mode and there's an ultra wide mode, which looks really, really cool. Maximum takeoff weight, this is 410 grams, which means it's not under 250 grams. So you have to register this drone if you're in the States or in Australia. And if you're using it for commercial gain, you have to go through the proper protocols and licensing and whatnot. And also from a safety point of view, you can't just be flying this over people or near airports and whatnot. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, real talk. This, I think I'll buy just to have in the back of the car when we're in the field, we're on jobs, we're on site, and we've got some time to burn and we want to throw this up and just have a nice little fly around because it's cool as. Also, personally, I think this is a really good entry level drone if you're getting into FPV because of the safety factors, the redundancies, take your hands off the sticks, it will just stop, extra flight time, and you can really start learning the movements of FPV and also get into flips and rolls and whatnot eventually, which you can with the manual mode. So in that sense, this is good. Now I was thinking, we, we did a job last year, right, for um, a Melbourne women's basketball team. And the amount of preparation that went into this shot, we used an old school Bumblebee, it was an iFlight system. We had to get the drone from outside, inside into the stadium, and then just loop around the players. And that was, that was the whole shot. It sounds very simple, but oh my goodness, the amount of technical problems we went through just to get the the video feed, uh, the controller feed, everything was just insane. But something like this, if we had this, I, we would have just literally rocked up with this, with these goggles, and just done that whole shot in one take. No issues at all. Because of how smart <laughs> and the technology that's in this in regards to the video feed, the camera system, like it's just such a great little content creation FPV drone. This is gonna be all over, I reckon. <laughs> all over Bali, all over Thailand, the Bahamas. Everyone's just gonna whip this out of their bag and their goggles and just get some really cool shots with it and then chuck it back in your bag and off you go. None of this sitting around with your screwdrivers and like replacing batteries and this and that. It's just out of the bag and off you go. So in my opinion, I think this is a really, really cool kit to have in your bag if you're a content creator, if you're in that creative space. This is awesome. So get it, check it out, go have a fly. If you're serious about getting into proper FPV and you want to do your own little um, builds and whatnot, 
it's a good starting point, then you can move on to your five inch custom build or whatnot. So that's enough talking. Let's go fly. Ah! <laughs> Did you catch it? Oh my god. <laughs> Why are we doing this around so much water? 